Gates here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers. I'm going to share something a little different here with you today. This is a clip of a video that we've loaded into what we're calling the Dojo. We just launched it here, really, really excited about it. These are videos that we do only for our customers. Um, this one's a little geeky, right? So sometimes it's just support. Um, it's archives of our wine and wealth class that we do every week for our customers. Could be stock market updates. And today I'm going to focus on the S&P 500's actual returns. So this video, is, again, is just a clip that's loaded in the dojo. You can watch it anytime if you're one of our customers. And I thought I'd share it with you here to see if it's something uh, maybe that you guys uh, would be interested in seeing. If so, of course, you would check us out here at jazzwealth.com. But in the meantime, enjoy. All right, let's get started here, guys. I want to cover something uh, a little interesting here today. Um, it has to do with the S&P 500's returns. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to actually take the entire lifespan of the S&P 500 into account. We're going to give you the real numbers versus what you're expected to see. So here we go. I sort of jokingly said 42.7% of the times you're going to be very disappointed in what happens with the S&P uh, returns. Now you're taught that the S&P returns 7% a year. And to be fair, the, what they're doing there, and let me just kind of explain that for a second. What people are doing is they're baking in inflation. The actual return of the S&P 500 over its entire life is 9.8%. But a lot of people say, well, it's 9.8%. That's the raw number. There's inflation to figure out in there. They round up for what the actual inflation rate is. They put in their 2.8%. And they go, okay, so you, you net 7%. So you got about 2.4% inflation. Maybe the rest is like normal costs and things along the way. They go, okay, so you're going to get 7%. Here's the problem with that. The average return is 7%. But how often do you actually see it? Almost half of the time, the markets will return less than the average. So the, think about it. 50% of the time, you're expecting to see 7%. You're actually not going to see it. Let's take it a step further. Let's actually break this thing down into pieces. 6.7% of the time, the S&P 500 yielded a return that would fall into where that expected average is, meaning it, it returned either 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10%. Only 6.7% of the time, which means in the 94, 95 year history of the S&P 500, I'm sorry, 91 year history of the S&P 500, you've expected to see 7% and only 6.7% of the time did you get it. So you very rarely ever saw a return between 5 and 10%. So the other side to that is you very rarely saw small losses. This is like a double whammy if you think about it because you're disappointed you didn't see what everybody says the re return expectation is, right? The average, 7%. It, it didn't come. <laughs> so where was it? 94% of the time, I didn't see it. The other side to that is most of the losses in the S&P 500 are small. So you're psychologically disappointed on one end, thinking you're doing something wrong. And then if we take a step further, when the markets fall, they barely fall, like when they actually have a small loss of between zero and negative 10%, what's that, like 12% of the time? So you don't get to see tiny little losses. So you're, you're like, you're damaged by the fact you don't get the good returns, and then you're damaged because the losses, when they happen, are usually bigger, right? So barely do you see small losses. When they, the markets do fall, they tend to fall a lot right? 10% uh, or greater to the downside. So half the time when the markets gain, they're actually blasting off, right? So you got 50.6% of the time, you're getting 10% or greater, something higher than that. It's kind of neat to see that 27% of the time you made 20% or more. So these little things, this breakdown, this distribution of how the S&P 500 works really helps you get your mind right, doesn't it? Because you know, like, if next year you don't see a 7% return, you go, well, I'm not supposed to. It just doesn't work that way. I should see something much greater. Or technically to the downside, I should see a nasty downside move. If you know that now, then you know when the markets fall, 5%, you probably in your mind, you'll go, uh-oh, <laughs> this is probably going to get a lot worse. Statistically, the market should fall greater than 10%. So your mind is already wrapped around it. What happened in December, now you know there's a reason for that, 
right? The markets don't just lose a little bit. They lose a lot when they do fall, right? They don't just gain a little bit. They very rarely gain a little bit. They gain a lot. And that's human emotion. It totally makes sense. People get greedy most of the time. And when they're not greedy, they're fearful. Other times, it's just a wash, right? It's just this sort of back and forth. So I hope that helps. That was just something quick I wanted to kind of go through with you to show you the distribution of the returns over the entire lifespan there. And uh, that'll help you get your mind right. Enjoy, guys.